Hello, everybody. Carl should be in in just a second. We just wrapped up our last meeting, so we'll wait for him to come in, and we'll get started. Can you guys make sure I can hear you in the room? You guys, oh, you guys are muted. Okay, I got it. Just making sure. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And then do this real quick. Just so we don't run out of time. Yes. Yeah. And no. Well, I don't know the last page of the free page. I also want to just switch. I don't care about it. I just wanted you to know. So you're in this case. All right. It's nine o'clock. Are you guys yeah. ready to rock and roll? Yeah. 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 So we'll check. Hey, you guys, you transition from me to me really quickly, Chair Rolf. Yeah, that's right, man. It's pretty easy through the magic of, magic of technology. I didn't even have to stand up. Uh, you got everybody um, <laughs> all right. We're in the 23-24 session. I thought I heard Cindy's voice. I see Blake there. Do we have... Hello. All members? Okay, there we go. Perfect. Um, all right, let's call this meeting to order. Uh, we need to approve the minutes from June 14th, 2023. Carl and I were the, the two that were there for that. Uh, that's always funny to approve these minutes. I'll move to approve. Uh, do I have a I'll second? Start. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, we're off and rolling. All right, let's review and adopt agenda items uh, for the year. Um, who takes that on? Is that John? Yeah, want... I can do that. Okay. Um, so this is uh, attachments two and three. Uh, that's pages two through nine and 10 and 11 of your material packets. Uh, first is the, the governance committee charter uh, for new members or for everyone. Um, so we create that uh, kind of talks about the composition and mission of the governance committee specifically includes facilitating the board's efforts to meet responsibility of the systems uh, to the system and institutions in the public at large compliance with our fiduciary duties um, cultivating global understanding of the board's varied responsibilities overseeing the bylaws regulations policies the things that we're uh, supposed to do as a board overseeing board effectiveness providing board member development, uh, reviewing our processes for meeting our responsibilities for things like CEO hiring, structure content frequency of the meetings, uh, structure content and frequency of committee meetings, delegation to subcommittees, resources and authority of the committee uh, include basically the entire staffs at your disposal. <laughs> um, um, then uh, carrying out our meeting responsibilities, and um, that this charter can be evaluated and modified by the committee as needed. I, th I think the real important pages are pages 9, 10, and 11 uh, for those of you that are new. Um, that, that's where you kind of can see how we go through the year on this stuff. And so um, will we actually have a governance meeting in October? I see that on there, Blake. We we likely will not. Okay. Yeah, uh, these materials were prepared before that decision I, was. Yeah, I've been planning on just waiting until November. Um, if, okay. we need one, if we need one, we can stand one up though. But we don't need to vote to change the October 18th here that's on page 10. Uh, we just know that that's gonna slide, right? Correct. Okay. But this, this, I think you get a real sense of, uh, you know, for Regent Lane and Regent Benson, kind of what we know we're going to cover every year. And then we take up special things like you, you'll see today um, as they come up. Um, and so then you can see how page nine kind of bleeds in then to the calendar of the year. So Regent Lane and Regent Benson, you guys have any questions about why there's governance committee, uh, what the structure looks like for the year? I'm comfortable with it as it's proposed, but... Uh, and of course, we're not limited in this meeting. If we decide mid-year to to work on this document, we always can. So, uh, Regent Lane, Regent Benson, anything? No, no questions, Mr. Chair. I have no questions either. Regent Ice, anything you'd want to add on this? 
Yeah, well, man of many words. Thank you. Um, say I agree with you, John. I have nothing to add. Is that there we go. I like that. There you go. Much more affirmative. Um, <laughs> that's, uh, that's what Charlie Munger always says to Warren. And then he'll be here. <laughs> All right. Uh, review. So we got we reviewed it. Uh, is there any, John, anything else you want to review on there before we move to adopt it? No, you mentioned uh, that we need to bump the October stuff and let that slide, but no, nothing, nothing else that. Okay. Well, I uh, look for a motion to adopt our agenda topics and schedule for the year. Uh, take into account that we probably won't meet in October. So move. All right. Got a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. This is Lane. Okay, any further discussion? There are none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, we're off and running. All right, let's move into the consider uh, governance committee topics. Um, board member uh, conflict of interest disclosures. John, you're walking us through that? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is attachment four of your material starting on page 12. And every year, uh, in accordance with board policy, Regents report their actual and apparent conflicts of interest on forms provided to them by board staff. That was done this year. I think forms were sent out a little before the uh, retreat. Uh, and then some folks got them done then and, and we collected a few uh, following that, got, got everybody's in, um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, and then uh, we go through all of that and uh, review and, and make recommendations regarding that. So, um, there are uh, a couple kinds of things. There are the um, reported memberships and affiliations on governing boards of affiliated corporations. Uh, so we make determinations regarding the permissibility of accepting or continuing serving in those capacities. And then there are transactional things that occur as well. So the report, those things are both reported in here. Um, as, as to memberships and affiliations, board policy requires that the board together with the involved region, make a determination regarding the permissibility of accepting and retaining such an appointment uh, and that there's guidelines provided. So with that, uh, one region has reported serving on a governing board of an institution that's coordinated by the board and that's Regent Dykus who serves on the Kansas Board of Regents or as the Kansas Board of Regents appointee to, uh, to Washburn University pursuant to a statutory requirement. He served in that capacity last year as well. Uh, two regions have reported service on governing boards of non-controlled affiliated corporations of an institution that's governed by the board. Uh, Regent Dykus serves as a trustee uh, to the executive committee member, or a uh, trustee and executive committee member and investment committee member of the KU Endowment Association as a non-controlled affiliated corporation of the University of Kansas. Regent Benson uh, serves as a member of the executive board of Pittsburgh State University Foundation, a non-controlled affiliated corporation of Pittsburgh State University and not in your materials, Regent Ice uh, also serves on the KSU Board of Trustees, uh, which he mentioned to me this morning, since those things were reported by others, he wanted that to be reported as well and considered. Um, one region's reported service on an advisory board of an institution and that's Regent Dyka serves on the board as a board member of the executive committee an executive committee member of the University of Kansas School of Business Dean's Advisory Board. Going to page 14 now, one region has reported service on a non-governing board of an affiliated corporation of an institution that's controlled by the board. Regent Dyka serves as a trustee of the Washburn University Foundation Board, which is a non-governing board of Washburn University Foundation. And one region has reported service on a governing board of an affiliated corporation of an institution that's controlled by the board. Regent Johnston serves as a member of the board of directors and the resident agent for the Institute for the Development of Educational Advancement, which is a controlled affiliated corporation of Fort Scott Community College, organized to conduct research for support uh, to support funding opportunities for the pursuit of educational advancement and innovation. And finally, one region has reported service on a governing board of an entity created by a governor's executive order and of an organization created to assist the Office of the Department of Commerce. Regent Parasker serves on as a member of Kansas Works, which is an advisory board originally created by executive, Governor's Executive Order 15-06 to assist in establishing and coordinating workforce programs in the state of Kansas, including but not limited to 
the implementation of Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, WIOA, and the Kansas Apprenticeship Council created to assist the Apprenticeship Registration Office to actively grow a robust system that supports apprenticeship, stakeholders, sponsors, apprentices, and intermediaries. So those are all of the reported memberships and affiliations. And staff recommends approving <clears throat> Regent Dykus, Benson's, Johnston's, and Brasker's continuous service on these boards. The rationale is that KSA 13-13A04A4 provides that one member of the Washburn University Board of Regents shall be a member of the Kansas Board of Regents, and that's statutory required. So therefore, that is not a conflict. Um, we're meeting our statutory obligation. And the other institutions, because of those roles and how they meet with the, the board's mission, um, we don't feel like those, at least staff's recommendation, would be that the board approve uh, the continued service by the regents on those boards uh, condition on their recognition that their duty is first and foremost to the Board of Regents. And if any actual conflict arises, they would take appropriate action to manage or remedy those conflicts. So that's the membership and relations board. Yes, sir. So I think you might include Regent Ice on there as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Correct. That Thank would be uh, the same rationale. Uh, same relationship. Right, thank you, John. Any questions for John on any of this? Or comments? And then would you like me to go through the contract or transactional portion as well uh, before we take action, before the yeah, sure. takes action? Go ahead. Okay. So contract or transactions, this is page uh, 15 of your materials. Um, five regions have reported an interest in an entity that has entered one or more contracts or transactions with one or more institutions that are governed or coordinated, coordinated by the board. First, Regent Benson's employed uh, by the Pittsburgh Area Chamber of Commerce, which occasionally has business transactions with Pittsburgh State University. Uh, Regent Benson's also a member of the board of directors of the Crawford County Career and Technical Education Center, which is a standalone 501c3 that leases space to Fort Scott Community College. Uh, for classes. Regent Benson's a graduate of, uh, in the Master's of Business Administration program at Pittsburgh State University. Regent Ice has an ownership interest in a radio station that does some advertising uh, for Cali County Community College. He's not involved in the management or operation of the station and thus has no direct involvement in the station's relationship with the college. Uh, he also has 1% ownership interest in a company called Rat Coach that has business relationship with a coach at Johnson County, County Community College. Region Ice is not involved in the management or operation of Rat Coach, including its relationship with uh, the college coach. Regent Mendoza is a doctoral student at Kansas State University. Regent Prasker has 100% ownership interest in Snap IT Solutions, which is a limited liability company that conducts training for which the Board of Regents provides certifi uh, certificates of approval um, to uh, offer in Kansas. And the Regent Winter has a 2.12% ownership interest in Ad Astra Integrity Measurement Systems Incorporated, which is a cybersecurity startup company in which the KU Center for Research also has uh, a less than 10% equity investment. Neither Regent Winter nor KUCR have a controlling interest or position with Ad Astra, and currently Ad Astra has no contractual agreements with KU or KUCR. So, staff recommends directing Regent Benson to ex uh, excuse himself from participating on behalf of the boards in matters involving or related to any contract or transaction between the Pittsburgh Area Chamber of Commerce and Pittsburgh State University or concerning the lease of space by uh, Fort Scott Community College from Crawford County Career and Technical Education Center directing Regent Ice to excuse himself from participating on behalf of the board in matters involving or related to a contract or transaction impacting KCY radio station, RAC coach, directing Regent Prasker to excuse herself from participating on behalf of the board in matters involving impacting or relating to SNAP IT, and directing Regent Winner to excuse himself from participating on behalf of the board in matters involving or impacting or related to Ad Astra 
it's noted the Board of Regents generally would not be asked to approve or any activity surrounding the community college advertising contracts or athletic personnel. So staff recommends directing the Regents Mendoza, Benson, and, and Benson to excuse themselves from any board action directly impacting programs in which they are. Any questions for John? Any comments? Pretty straightforward. You know, uh, Region ICE is usually very good at uh, reminding all of us, you know, this, we put this out there, but we really believe uh, the Regents who have, you know, conflicts will remove themselves from any conversations or votes that they see, um, you know, so we, we have a lot of trust in everybody inside of that, so. Any additional comments before we vote on this? So two parts, we're voting on the committees with the addition of region size, you know, recognition of region size committee work at K-State, um, and then the um, recommendations as far as, uh, you know, the voting and, and contracts and transactions. So um, this is something we vote on that it goes on to the board and it'll be, you'll see it on the board agenda. Is that right? So. Um, yes, that's correct. Yep. Any, any other questions, comments, or do I have a motion to approve? As I stated. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Do I have a second? John, would you second it since Blake and I are both in the... Uh, yeah, I will second Regent Lane. All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Sounds good. Looks like it passed. You guys need to abstain? On that, do I need to call for an abstention or do you guys, okay? Uh, my personal view, I'm, of course, we will speak for himself, is that I should vote overall because it's a very narrow place that I'm involved. Yeah. Not voting it would eliminate the game of the land on the rest of the issues. That would be my perspective too. Yeah. Okay. John, you comfortable with that? Yes, sir. All right, 4 0. We're off and going. All right. This is, uh, Proposed revisions of board policy not being worked on in other board committees. We got two of them. Uh, John, are you taking the lead or Blake? Which one you guys? I can lead on the first one. Okay. Um, because we're not bringing that one this meeting. <laughs> um, okay. So um, universities need to do more work on that, and 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 so we're not. We'll be bringing that in November. Okay. We'll I'll, I'll and, let John do this. Yes. We'll sit with bated breath. <laughs> that was the one I was. He stepped up. Yeah. So you you can you get the second. One. <laughs> okay. So the second one is a draft board of regents policy to address the Fairness and Women's Sports Act. Um, this year, the legislature passed a bill um, establishing the Fairness and Women's Sports Act. Uh, Governor Kelly vetoed that bill originally, um, and then the legislature uh, overrode that about two weeks later in early April. Um, I think the vote in the, well, I have those vote totals here somewhere, but uh, We're good. fairly big margins. So it was overridden. And, and what the Fairness in Women's Sports Act does is uh, uh, contains about six definitions and provides that um, uh, the Board of Regents adopt rules and regulations. Yeah, we're bringing this in, in as a proposed policy as opposed to administrative rules and regulations through that formal process because we can do that quicker. Um, and this uh, is uh, impacting governed institutions uh, for us. The, Statute also requires the High School Athletic Association to adopt uh, similar rules and regulations, and then the governing board of each community college to address rules in the same area. So this is our set uh, proposed for you all. And it's fairly short. This is uh, page 17 of your materials, attachment five. It would provide as required by the statute. This is a reference to the Fairness and Women's Sports Act. The KSA number is not there yet because those haven't been assigned yet. Uh, I could put House Bill 2238, 22, 2023 House Bill 2238, I believe is uh, the reference, the citation to the bill. Uh, each state university shall expressly designate 
each inter, interscholastic, intercollegiate, intramural, or club athletic team or sport that is sponsored by the university as one of the following based on biological sex, either male, men's, or boys, female, females, women, or girls, or then co-ed or mixed. And then athletic teams or sports designated for females, women, or girls shall not be open to students of the male sex. Uh, each state university shall use information collected when individuals elect to participate, participate on a team or in a sport to determine which gender team is appropriate for each respective student. Uh, should a dispute arise, the state university shall refer to the original birth or adoption certificate completed at or near the uh, time of birth. If the original birth or adoption certificate is not available, documentation provided by a licensed physician indicating biological sex at birth may be utilized. If biological sex at birth is unable to be determined by the above means, then the student shall be eligible to participate in male, men's, or boys, co-ed or mixed athletic activities only. And nothing in this policy shall be construed to require a state university to take action that would violate Title IX of the Higher Education Amendments <coughs> of 1972 or any other provision of federal law. And I uh, printed out copies, they're not part of your materials, but copies of the statute itself, if any of you would like to see that. All right, what questions or comments do you have for our council? It looks like, you know, the thought was to really follow what was passed and it seems like we really kind of just repeated that referenced it and if that should ever change then it'd be easy to go back to this and change with however that changes right um region i is region lane region benson president flanders is going to add i'd like to ask it slightly differently john so we are doing and only doing what the laws are not broadening in any way we're not broadening in any way that is correct From here, does this, this would go to the board in November? Correct, yes, right. if it passed here. Okay. All right, and, and if we didn't pass this, uh, it'd be pretty extreme penalties because then we'd be out of, out of uh, accord with the law, right? Yeah, there's not a timeline in the statute that says the board shall do this. It doesn't say by X date, so, um, but yeah, I, I suppose if someone were to say, you know, where's your proof that you've done this? We, we couldn't show them anything until we get something uh, adopted. Yep. Regent Lane, Regent Benson. If there are no questions, I would move for approval. All right, I'll move to approve to take it up to the board. Is there a second? I'll second. But I want to express my great disappointment that we've come to this place. Thank you, Regent Lane. All right. All uh, for approval, say aye. 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 All opposed? Same sign. All right. We'll move it up to the board. Thank the you. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that clarity. <laughs> <laughs> Was it the Royal we? Um, all right. Okay. Um, let's keep trucking here. Uh, let me get back to my first page. We are on to board contracts for uh, approval for President CEO. John, are you Blake who's, who's leading this one? Are you going to do a Swiss agreement? I was going to turn it over to Gage for this one. Yes, sir. All right, Gage, Rolf. Councilor yes. Rolf. Uh, this is a request for the committee's authorization for President Flanders to execute amendments to the state wage interchange system data agreement. Um, this is an agreement that uh, we and all the other states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, have entered into with the federal government. It allows board staff to pull wage data from all of those other jurisdictions that's been used for reporting for um, uh, WIOA, which you heard about earlier, our Adult Education and Family Liter Literacy Act purposes, and then also for reporting under the Perkins Act. Um, these, there are three amendments that the federal agency who oversees this contract has asked us to um, assent to. Only two of those apply to the board. One of those uh, would 
allow us to implement an employment flag, which um, would, under certain circumstances, allow us to share just whether a person who we have in our system has wages reported for a particular quarter. That would require further implementation by board staff. The other one is a technical amendment, which would simplify the amendment process. It would essentially formalize what's happening here. And that is that these amendments will become active on a state-by-state -state basis as each uh, agency who needs to agree within the state agrees. So we are one of the four um, state agencies who are users of this data. The others are the Kansas Department of Commerce, uh, the Department of Children and Families, and the Department of Labor. And the reason for this request is this agreement has a five-year term. It was initially signed in 2019. It's also ex it's, uh, extended at the basically the will of the federal agencies that run the contract. So they elect to extend it. It automatically extends. And for that reason, um, to make it crystal clear that we have the authority to bind the agency, um, we're asking for your approval. Since board policy only delegates to President Flanders the authority to enter into contracts that are for three years in duration or less. So we have a bit of a gray area in this situation. Well, let's stay out of the gray. We'll, we'll take a look at it. any questions or comments. Pretty straightforward, I think. Anybody? All right. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Do I hear a second? I'll second. All right. I'm going to move second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Good work. Uh, is there any other old or new business that you guys want to bring before the board of the, or the governance committee at this time? Sorry. Okay, we got two meetings coming up, November 15th, December 20th. Uh, we'll, we'll be skipping October. So appreciate you all, and we'll be seeing you again uh, later this morning. Have a great one. We are adjourned. Thank you.